The first representative parliament held in England was held on the 20th of January 1265. It was led by a man called Simon de Montfort. He was the brother-in-law of the king, King Henry III, and married to the king's sister, Eleanor. Henry and his eldest son, Edward, were being held captive by Simon de Montfort, who was claiming to rule in their name. Henry III was the son of King John of Magna Carta fame. Magna Carta introduced the first, for the first time in England the idea of a representative government and a monarch being held accountable to its people. Where Magna Carta had set out in theory this idea that the king could be held accountable, the, a later agreement called the Provisions of Oxford actually started to set out the mechanics of how this would work. And just as John had agreed to Magna Carta, so his son, Henry III, agreed to the provisions of Oxford. But also, like his father, he ran to the Pope at his earliest opportunity to get out of the promises that he'd made. And again, just as with John, this caused uproar with the barons of the land and unrest, leading to his own brother-in-law, Simon de Montfort, raising an army from his base at Kenilworth Castle in Warwickshire. His army met that of the kings outside Lewis in Sussex on the 12th of May, 1264. Despite being outnumbered, de Montfort's army inflicted a crushing defeat on the king's men at the Battle of Lewis and after, shortly afterwards took the king and his eldest son Edward prisoner. For the next 15 months, de Montfort ruled the country, but how when he had the king captive? Well, he decided to use Parliament. In response to increasing unrest both within the country and even within his own supporters, de Montfort decided that he needed to call Parliament in order to rule through them and give this what many considered an unnatural state of affairs, having an anointed king in captivity, some air of legitimacy. Writs were sent out to the sheriffs, the royal representatives in each county to ask them to send forward two law-worthy knights to represent them in the Parliament. Cities were also asked to send two citizens, again of law-abiding and worthy, worthy persons, to come and represent their area. On the 28th of May 1264, 16 days after the Battle of Lewis, Edward, Henry III's eldest son, was able to escape his prison with the help of Lady Maud de Montfort who was a loyal royalist. She had arranged for him supplies and horses and shelter and so he managed to escape and raise an army which met that of Simon de Montfort again, this time in Evesham. On the 4th of August, six weeks after Edward's escape, he got his army to Evesham where it met with de Montfort's army this time though, for de Montfort, it was going to be a huge defeat. Thousands of his supporters were killed and de Montfort himself was killed. His body was mutilated and his head and testicles hacked off and sent to Maud uh, by Queen Eleanor as a thank you for her loyalty. I could think of better presents for that. So what was so special about this parliament? There had been parliaments before but this is a key one because it's the first time that it was a representative parliament. It wasn't however the first time knights from the shires had attended a parliament but when they had in the past it had been for a very specific reasons around taxation and agreement to some sort of taxation. This was the first time that they had been asked to come and just represent their areas and help in decision-making of the country. Okay, so we know de Montfort wasn't getting on with his King Henry III. We know there was a split. This is a time after Magna Carta within living memory of many of the people alive at the time that their ideals that they were promised about Rep being represented in the governance of the country, having the king held accountable to the property owners, because you know they're the only ones that matter, um, would, would happen and it hadn't happened. So de Montfort 
was in this position where people were willing to try something new and the mechanics of how this would happen were sort of falling into place. Even though de Montfort, he's credited with having this first representative parliament, but I don't think we should over romanticise his, his intentions around it. It was for a purpose. He needed an air of legitimacy over his rule while he effectively had the king and the heir to the throne in captivity. Although with the death of de Montfort his rule was over, the ideas and the ideals behind Parliament and a representative house lived on and is what we still see as a linchpin of our democracy now.